Hey there, movie aficionados. Do you remember those good old days when y'all gather around the TV, popcorn in hand, ready to be transported to a different era of storytelling? Ah, nostalgia. Today, let's take a trip down memory lane and talk about a true classic from 1945. They were expendable. Have you ever watched it? If you have, I'm sure it holds a special place in your heart. And if you haven't, well, maybe it's time to add it to your movie night list. I'd love to hear your cherished memories of watching this film, those favorite moments, unforgettable characters, or even the stories of how it brought friends and family together. Movies like these have a unique way of weaving themselves into our lives, don't they? Now, let's dive into some fascinating tidbits about They Were Expendable. Get ready to uncover some hidden gems and lesser known facts about this classic war film that has left an indelible mark on cinematic history. So grab your virtual popcorn and let's get started on this journey through time. They Were Expendable, released in 1945, is a war film directed by John Ford and based on a book by William L. White. Set in the early days of World War II, the film portrays the exploits of Lieutenant John Brickley and Lieutenant Rusty Ryan as they command a squadron of PT boats in the Philippines. The movie stands out for its realistic portrayal of the unsung heroes of the war, the PT boat crews, who played a crucial role in defending against Japanese forces in the Pacific. The characters of Brickley and Ryan are iconic, representing the bravery and determination of the individuals who fought in these small, vulnerable vessels. The film's unique style lies in its gritty, documentary-like approach, emphasizing the camaraderie and sacrifices of the PT boat crews, while also showcasing the harsh realities of war. They Were Expendable had a notable impact on popular culture by shedding light on a lesser-known aspect of World War II and paying tribute to the bravery of those who served on PT boats. It remains a classic in the war film genre and continues to be celebrated for its portrayal of the sacrifices made by these often overlooked heroes. In 1950, filmmaker Lindsay Anderson interviewed John Ford, the director of the 1945 movie They Were Expendable. Surprisingly, Ford confessed that he didn't like the film and had never watched the finished product. He had issues with the project, the shooting, and the editing, which was done without his supervision. Even the music was added without his consent. Anderson was taken aback because he thought it was a good movie. Ford eventually agreed to give it a chance. A few weeks later, Anderson received a telegram from Ford that simply read, saw they were expendable. You were right, Ford. And they were expendable, the names of the main characters were fictionalized, although they were based on real individuals. This decision added a layer of storytelling to the film. One poignant scene in the movie involves a character named Dad Knowlton, a shipwright who repairs PT boats. Despite the Japanese advancing in the area, Dad refuses to leave the place where he has lived and worked for 40 years. John Wayne's character, Rusty Ryan, eventually leaves Dad sitting alone on his porch with a rifle in his hands and a jug of moonshine between his knees while Red River Valley plays in the background. This scene bears an eerie resemblance to a moment in The Grapes of Wrath, directed by John Ford himself. Notably, Dad is played by Russell Simpson, who also portrayed Pa Jode in The Grapes of Wrath. They Were Expendable is a film with interesting behind-the-scenes anecdotes and connections to other cinematic works, making it a notable piece of Hollywood history. During the production of the 1945 movie They Were Expendable, tensions flared between director John Ford and actor John Wayne. Ford, who had served as a naval officer during World War II, viewed Wayne as a coward for not enlisting. Throughout filming, Ford continually insulted Wayne. It wasn't until co-star Robert Montgomery, another naval officer, confronted Ford about the insults that the director relented. This emotional intervention brought Ford to tears, and he stopped abusing Wayne. The film's screenwriter, Frank Weed, had to be on standby for rewrites, as Ford often made impromptu changes to scenes. Ford was known for seizing unexpected opportunities, like when a fire broke out on Key by Skane, and he dispatched a second unit to capture footage for the attack on Manila Bay scene. Wayne recalled, Ford was always taking unexpected shots, like this one of Manila burning. He would use any situation that developed. If it was raining when the script did not call for rain, he shot it in the rain and changed the script. He had this blueprint, sure, but he was always looking to change it. The movie's filming location was Key Biscayne, Florida, where extensive design 
and set work transformed the area to resemble the Philippines. In the crucible of filmmaking, personal conflicts, and creative improvisations shaped they were expendable, a war movie that echoed the real-life tensions and unpredictability of wartime. It's a testament to the dedication and adaptability of the cast and crew. In the 1945 movie They Were Expendable, directed by John Ford, there's a poignant moment during a funeral service for two servicemen who died in battle. John Wayne's character, Lieutenant John Brickley, reads Requiem, a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson. Interestingly, this poem was originally intended to be spoken by another character, Montgomery. John Wayne, playing Spigweed, would later recite a portion of the same poem in the 1957 film The Wings of Eagles, a biographical film about Weed, who happened to be the screenwriter for They Were Expendable. John Ford, the director, was known to have poured a lot of himself into the making of this film. John Wayne, who starred in the movie, remarked that Ford was remarkably intense during the production, displaying a level of concentration he had never seen before. It was evident that Ford was determined to achieve something special with this project. They Were Expendable is based on the real-life exploits of Lieutenant John Bulkley, a World War II Medal of Honor recipient. The film captures the heroism and sacrifices made by the PT boat crews in the Pacific during World War II, and Bulkley's character serves as a representation of the bravery displayed by those who fought in the war. In summary, They Were Expendable not only tells a compelling story of wartime heroism, but also features interesting connections to other films and notable dedication from its director, John Ford, making it a significant piece of cinematic history. In 1945, the movie They Were Expendable hit the silver screen, directed by John Ford and starring John Wayne. During filming, Wayne felt like an outsider among a cast and crew filled with Navy personnel. He believed there was favoritism, especially toward his co-star, Robert Montgomery. Wayne claimed that Montgomery was Ford's favorite, while he, Wayne, faced constant criticism on set. According to Wayne, Ford repeatedly called him a clumsy bastard, a big oaf, and criticized his movements, comparing them to that of an ox. Near the end of production, John Ford suffered a serious accident, falling 20 feet off a scaffold and breaking his leg. As a result, Robert Montgomery took over directing duties for the remaining scenes, mainly focused on battle sequences. After recovering, Ford returned to his field photographic unit in Europe, just in time to cross the Rhine with Allied forces at the end of World War II. They Were Expendable was based on William L. White's book of the same name, chronicling the actions of Lieutenant John Bulkley and Lieutenant Robert Kelly. Interestingly, both Kelly and U.S. Army nurse Peggy Smith filed separate lawsuits against MGM, John Wayne, and Donna Reed for their portrayals in the film. While the movie closely followed the book, it depicted Kelly as impetuous and hell-bound for glory, and Nurse Smith was shown romantically involved with Kelly. Wayne, Reed, and MGM settled these lawsuits out of court for nominal sums, all less than $5,000. In summary, they were expendable, a 1945 war film, had its share of behind-the-scenes drama and legal disputes. John Wayne's feelings of being an outsider, John Ford's accident, and the lawsuits brought by the real-life inspirations for the film's characters added a layer of intrigue to the production. As we reach the closing credits of our cinematic journey through the poignant narrative of They Were Expendable, I hope you found yourself transported to the World War II era, where valor and sacrifice were woven into every frame of this timeless classic. This 1945 masterpiece, directed by John Ford, offers us a window into a pivotal chapter of history, one where ordinary individuals transcended their limitations to become heroes. The film's portrayal of the PT boat crew's unwavering dedication and resilience in the face of adversity invites us to reflect on our own capacity for courage and determination. Perhaps you've been moved by the indomitable spirit of Lieutenant Rusty Ryan, and Lieutenant John Brickley, or felt a deep connection with the sacrifices made by those who served on the PT boats. Maybe you've been struck by the film's ability to capture the essence of camaraderie amidst the chaos of war. They Were Expendable serves as a powerful reminder of the sacrifices made by countless individuals during wartime, making us ponder the significance of duty and the bonds that tie us to history. Now, I invite you to share your own thoughts, memories, or reflections on this remarkable film. How has They Were Expendable left its mark on you? Have you discovered new layers of meaning with each viewing? 
or has it stirred your own memories of those hove served in times of conflict? Your perspective is a unique thread in the rich tapestry of this film's legacy. Thank you for taking this cinematic journey with us, and for allowing they were expendable to leave an indelible mark on your heart and mind. Your engagement and appreciation for cinema's enduring classics are what make these discussions so meaningful. Until our next cinematic rendezvous, keep the reel of your own life rolling and your appreciation for storytelling alive. And remember, every ending is but a new beginning. So, until next time, keep exploring the world of cinema and keep sharing your thoughts and memories with heartfelt gratitude for your time and interest.